Good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for being here. My name is Raven, though my friends also know me as Bren, and I use they, them pronouns. Before we get started, I want to make a couple of acknowledgements. Firstly, though this was already done lovely by Auntie, I want to acknowledge that we are gathering here tonight on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. They are the traditional custodians of this land and have been since time immemorial. I want to thank them for how they took care of these lands for thousands of generations. Sovereignty was never ceded and this always was and will always be Aboriginal land. I also want to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, as well as to any First Nations or Indigenous peoples here tonight. There have been stories told and music sung and played in these lands for tens of thousands of years. I feel very fortunate to be able to continue that tradition. Secondly, I want to acknowledge that some of the material that I'm going to be talking about tonight may be triggering for some people. I'm going to be talking about things like religion and faith and Christianity, figuring out my identity, mental and emotional health, and understandably, some of these things are fraught with trauma and pain and emotion for many people. If you need to take some space at any point, please do that. If you need to get up and find some space at the back or the side of the room to walk around, or you need to go outside for a bit, or if you just need to leave, that is all good. Take care of yourself. Tonight is also being videoed. The camera is pointing very much at me, so unless you come on the stage for some reason, you're not going to be on, on the video. Um, you will... Any sound that you make will still be heard, so I guess keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pointing at me, not at you. Um, also, if you're a more traditional Christian and you're here, kudos to you for deciding to be here. But fair warning that there will be some fairly pointed remarks at traditional Christianity at various points, just so you know. Tonight, I am going to be singing some songs and telling some stories, sharing about some of my journey from growing a Christian to realising that I was queer and how I started to reconcile and find harmony between the two in this event that I have called Rainbow Religion. There are going to be times when I'm talking more to the queer folks, times when I'm talking more to the Christian folks, and times when I'm talking a little bit to both. Have you ever felt boxed in in life? a bit trapped by the world around you and the expectation and ways that things are supposed to be. I certainly grow up feeling that way. And there are, were multiple boxes that I was living inside at the same time. Boxes like the Christianity that I grew up with, or the gender that I was labelled with, or the assumption that I was straight. Not to mention boxes like capitalism, or patriarchal society, or Western civilization. Now, some of these boxes are big enough that we don't even realise that we're living in a box because we've never felt the need to move outside of where the box is. Sometimes we don't even realise that there is an outside of the box. You know, how could there be people that have never watched The Princess Bride? <laughs> <sighs> the mind boggles. Um, but people certainly notice if we ever touch the edges of the box or horror of horrors go outside the box, my goodness. Um, Growing up, I was a curious kid, I, and I didn't really understand this idea of boxes very well. I kind of just did what I felt like doing, and I didn't worry too much about whether it fit within what I was supposed to do or not. Most of the time it did, but I danced around the edges enough that I was certainly seen as a bit weird and strange, but not in ways that were considered dangerous or really worth worrying about. Probably due at least in part to some white privilege or AMAB privilege or various other privileges that I grew up with. Um, but I was mostly left to do my own thing, and so I kind of did. I remember when I was a lot younger hearing these ideas about what men were supposed to be like or interested in. It seemed to be all fast cars, fast women, big guns, big guns, meat pies, <laughs> and football. Um, the phrase toxic masculinity wasn't really around then, but I distinctly remember that if that's what being a man was, I had no interest in being a man, thank you very much. Um, I grew up in a world of boxes. Growing up in a religious family, in a Christian family, there were expectations for how you would live your life. The way that you would live, the things that you would do, and the things that you wouldn't. Some of those boxes were fairly innocent and harmless, others were not. I still bear the scars from some of those boxes and how they cut me for trying to live outside of them. Some of those you will get to see tonight. 
perhaps you have some similar scars. As humans, we like putting things into boxes. We like putting names on things and sorting them into categories, making them make sense. And that's fine to a point. But the problems arise when we start to put people into boxes. Because we never fit particularly neatly. We're a bit too complex for that. But the world still puts us into these boxes. And sometimes we put ourselves into them. Sometimes it feels easier to live inside the box and just keep our head down than it does to live free. Our world tends to punish people that are living free. It's hard. But I do believe that it can be worth it to live completely as yourself, not worrying about who you're supposed to be or who you're meant to be, but just living free. When I recently wrote this song that I'm about to play for you in early 2020, this was the earliest of the songs I'm going to play for you tonight, a few of the lyrics were a little bit different. I came back to it early this year and realised I had essentially made a fairly generic conversion song. And that didn't sit quite right with me anymore, strangely enough. So I tweaked a couple of things. And now it's more about reaching out when you're struggling, not being locked into the same rhythms of life because of expectations. Particularly for me now, this has felt really relevant. I might not look it, but I'm very burnt out at the moment. I'm only able to keep going because of the help and support of so many around me, many of whom are here tonight. You help me to be able to live and live free. I hope that tonight, perhaps I can help you as well. Let's make sure that this isn't sinking on me while I'm playing. There we go.
Unfortunately, it took me a long time to realize that I wasn't meant to live inside these boxes, that I didn't need to. And so I spent many years trying to fit in just enough that I wouldn't fall out. That can put you very on edge, trying to live in ways that you aren't really meant to live. And this world already has so many different ways to put you on edge, this life isn't particularly easy. Especially if you are existing in spaces of oppression and lack of privilege. This world has generally been built by, at least certainly in Western spaces, and for cis-het, white, neurotypical, able-bodied, English-speaking Christian men. I grew up thinking that I was all of those. Turns out I'm only half of them. Thank goodness. Um, but this society that we live in can be a really harsh one sometimes. People can be really cruel to each other or to our environment. I'm grateful that I've known a lot of people that are kind and good and caring. But it is easy to be those things to people that we know. It's much harder when we're talking about people that we don't and people that we don't understand. Unfortunately, we've seen that used as a scare tactic against groups like refugees, asylum seekers, and also against queer people and trans people. There's a lot of fingers that get pointed, words that get thrown around, and a lot of the hurt that happens. I don't know about you, but I'm a very empathetic person. And there are times when I see that as a great blessing in relating and connecting to people. But there are times when that's fucking hard too. <laughs> because there is a lot of hurt in this world. And particularly with the world becoming ever more connected and interwoven, we can hear about more and more of that hurt so much more easily. And that can be really overwhelming at times and just kind of make you want to scream. The first line of this song is literally, there's so much screaming in my head all the time. It gets so constant that you kind of have to get good at disconnecting from that. Otherwise you can't do anything. But it feels like so many people are just disconnected from others in general and disconnected from the world that they're in. So this song is about trying to remind people of that hurt that we're causing. It's called Screaming.
was saying, I grew up in a Christian family, and in the world that I lived in, there were certain ways that you were expected to live. Things that were presented as the only option if you wanted to be a true Christian, whatever the fuck that is. Um, for instance, if you wanted to be in a romantic or a sexual relationship with someone, the only appropriate context for that was heterosexual monogamous marriage, or a relationship that was heading very firmly in that direction. And I knew that I wanted to be in a relationship, so that's what I did. I messed things up a fair bit along the way, and I spent a lot of time figuring out how on earth relationships worked. University is fun sometimes. Um, but suddenly I found myself in a serious relationship. And then suddenly I was engaged. And then suddenly I was married. Now all of this made sense at the time and didn't feel fast or wrong or anything like that, but hindsight is 2020 and all. Speaking of 2020, that's the year I got married. Um, <laughs> something else happened that year. Um, Brovid, Snowvid, Kofefe. Um, we managed to do everything before the world went to shit, which was rather lucky. A lot of people didn't have that privilege, but then we had a rather a lot of time to ourselves. I don't know if there's been research done about how many people figured out they were queer during lockdown, <laughs> but it feels like quite a lot. Um, yeah, I was one of those. Um, yes, hello. Um, I was seven or eight months into being married, and for some reason my brain is like, hey, you should think about sexuality and gender and relationships now, all at the same time. Thanks, brain! Um, <laughs> looking back, I can see the path that I took to get there, there, and how I slowly grew in my knowledge and understanding and acceptance of these things over time. But it had always felt like something external and outside that other people did. You know, it's, it's very different thinking and conceptualizing about something when it's something that other people are doing in comparison to where it's something that you're actually directly involved in. Um, you know, it felt like something that I wasn't allowed to touch or interact with, like that game of operation where you touch the metal bit and it buzzes you. You know, you're conditioned to stay in the box and believe that you can't go outside the box. I distinctly remember when I was a bit younger, like around uni years, having the thought of, eh, if I hadn't grown up in a Christian family, I'd probably be a trans woman at this point. But I didn't think that thought to be at all remarkable or strange. Didn't think that was, you know, worth thinking about more. Just, just like, eh, it's interesting, I'll think about it more some other time, maybe. Gosh, I'm such an egg. Um, but slowly, very slowly, um, over years and years, I had started to see that there was actually an outside to the box. The walls of the box had gotten thinner, and I began to know people that were living outside the box. And so when this thought came along, to think about sexuality and gender and relationships, it was scary, yeah, but not as scary as it could have been. And the thing is, too, that I knew myself very well. I was a very introspective person growing up. So it took me basically a couple of days of Googling to go, okay, I'm queer, I'm pansexual, I'm non-binary, and I'm polyamorous. All right. I just didn't have words before that to describe my own experience, but suddenly I did. Um, that was the easy part, though, because now I had to figure out what the fuck I was going to do with that. <laughs> I was still married. I was... But literally, working at a church at the time, I was doing music one day a week there. So I had some shit to work through. Um, but I knew that wherever this journey led me, that this was going to be significant. That this was going to be a turning point for me and a time that would change me. I didn't really know what that was going to look like, but I knew that it was important. Because there was this whole side to me that I hadn't acknowledged before, that I hadn't seen before, at least to the same degree that I was now. I'd known about it in some way, it felt familiar, but putting a name to it, putting a face to it, it changed things. And I knew that heading down this path could mean some hard decisions, that it could mean changing a lot about the life that I was living, but the risk or the, the cost felt worth it. I wrote this next song when I was still quite early on in this journey of figuring things out and had no clue where things were going. Um, because of that, and because I didn't know when or if I would be playing this song, or 
Hutu. I kept it pretty vague, but this was kind of my coming out song, or at least my song of coming out to myself. I think that's kind of the most important part. This is called More to Me. The opposite seems to be a lot more true. It seems to be a lot more about trying to protect what has been built, holding on to old ideas, rather than the sort of radical inclusion that Jesus was practicing. Everything is very black and white 
right and wrong, good and bad, clear lines for where things should be. But that's not really how the world works. Everything is a lot more messy and complicated when people get involved. And the thing is, the Bible kind of gets that. You know, if you've ever read books like Job or Ecclesiastes or Psalms, there's a lot of bits in those books where the writer's like, yeah, this doesn't really make sense. You know, this is what might seem right or what conventional wisdom might say or what seems correct, but that's not how things are actually happening. We like to talk in black and white and in nice and simple, but there's a lot more colour in this world. There's a lot more grey. It's dangerous to think that we speak for God or to think that God is on your side. A lot of damage has been done throughout history that way, and a lot of damage is still being done. People proclaiming who God apparently hates and who God is against and where God isn't. But last time I checked, though, God is with the hurting, with the downtrodden, with the oppressed, with the vulnerable. At the moment, the traditional church is doing a lot of that oppressing and hurting. When we draw these lines, we are drawing them through real people. If the church says that same-sex marriage is wrong, then you're alienating and hurting millions of queer couples and people. If the church says that being trans is wrong, you're alienating and hurting millions of trans people. If the church says that abortion is wrong, congratulations, you have just alienated and hurt most people that have a uterus. But Jesus was about inclusion. And I've started to find a couple of communities that are about that as well, which is awesome. It's crazy walking into a place and going, hey, I am non-binary, queer, pansexual, polyamorous, and divorced, and they don't bat an eyelid. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need more inclusive communities. Because I feel like people are curious about spirituality and Jesus, but pretty fucking tired of church and Christians. And I get pretty tired too sometimes, to be honest. So this song is about these artificial lines that we make and the people that get hurt doing it. And just to make it very clear, the first verse is listing some of these black and white views. These are not my views. Uh, this is called Black and White. Isn't that what Jesus did? 
about myself, and I didn't want to carry that weight around again. Jesus also says that he came that we might live a life to the full, not a half life, not a shadow life, not a pretend life, but a life to the full. I don't know about you, but for me, pretending to be something that I'm not is not living life to the full. Once I figured out who I was, I didn't really have much interest or energy in pretending to be something else. And that's something that I've learned before as well in a different way, because I'm autistic. I don't know how much you know about autism, but one thing we often do is something called masking, which is basically spending energy pretending not to be autistic. It's pretty fucking draining, um, and so that's something that over time I have been trying to unlearn as well just allowing me to be my authentic, autistic self. So after I'd gone through that, I sure as fuck wasn't going to pretend to be a straight cis man a second longer than I had to be, um, because that wasn't me. It wouldn't work. And God doesn't want us to be pretending to be someone else. They have made us as we are. I was created as a non-binary, queer, pansexual, polyamorous person that's not a mistake that's not something that was twisted by sin, but is something that is good and in the image of God, a reflection of who they are. Though this probably isn't the time to talk about why I think God is non-binary and polyamorous as well, maybe some other time, but um, <laughs> but yeah, God doesn't want me or you pretending to be something else. This is who I am. And it's okay if you haven't figured out who you are yet. The journey of self-discovery kind of keeps going as long as we live. The idea is just keep being authentically yourself. But I know that many people spend time, a lot of time, in spaces that it is not safe to do that. Whether that's your home, your work, your church, your friends, your family, where you study. Unfortunately, a lot of spaces can be unsafe. So be safe, of course, that's the, that's the priority. And try to find spaces and people that are safe to be authentic with. I felt very privileged to have the number of safe spaces and people that I have. My 
work has been quite supportive. The church I'm at now is deliciously queer. <laughs> and, I, and I've got a bunch of affirming and queer friends around. But not everyone has that, so it can be hard. But this song is about choosing to live life to the core. Living an authentic life as myself. Not a pretend life. Not a shadow life. Not a half life. A life to the core. Um, folks who use neo pronouns, mad props to you. 
Um, perhaps it means that people aren't using your new name or keep using the wrong gender terms for you or use any gender terms for you. Maybe it's people who think you're not really queer because your relationship is straight passing. Maybe it's people who think you're still into what you were 10 or 15 years ago or keep punishing you for a mistake that you made a long time ago. For myself, I think a lot of people look at me and just see a man wearing a skirt with long hair. A lot of people don't really understand or know about non-binary people that much. And so I get a lot of people still using he, him, calling me man or dude or guy or sir or mister. If it's people that I don't know and haven't interacted with before, then I can tolerate a bit of that. But if you're someone that I know, then I've told you about this. You know that I use they, them pronouns. You know that I've said I'm non-binary and not to use male gender terms for me. But some people still do it, and it doesn't feel like they're even trying. I don't have a lot of time for those people. Particularly if people don't understand gender or sexuality, they might say things like, Oh, before you were queer, da 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 but that's not how it works. It's that's like kinda of like saying to me, before you were autistic, da 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 I've always been autistic. And I've always been queer. I haven't always known that, no. But I've always known that I was different. And I spent too fucking long pretending not to be. So if you liked my mask more than the real me, sorry not sorry, this is who I am. If you can't keep up with that, I'm not going to have much energy for you. Don't put energy and time into people who aren't interested in putting that same energy and time into a person that is right in front of them. Because some people just keep getting stuck looking in the mirror, in that past, in that rear view. But that person only exists in their head now. It's not real. You're real. And you deserve people who see you as you are, and love you as you are. But this song, this song is about those people that are still stuck on the radio.
the conservative church and conservative Christians have a habit of casting people like us out, but saying that they still love us. The problem is, none of their actions could be described as loving, even working by their own standards. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. These verses from the Bible are held up as the benchmark by traditional Christians of what love is. But what they do is not kind. It is not patient. They are insistent on their own way. They are divisive and rejoice in what causes hurt. By their own standards, this cannot be described as love. I'm not the sort of person who likes to burn bridges. I much prefer building them. But when people continue to harm you and hurt you and make you unsafe, you need to make some space from that. And if people aren't aware that that's what they are doing, then they need to see that, to understand that they are hurting people. But as much as this next piece is about calling out the hurt that has been caused, it's also about recognising the beauty that we have built despite that. How there are people that have refused to let themselves be defined by that hurt, and instead crafted something new and beautiful and amazing. Who have said, you know, you, you are doing something horrible and hurtful with your faith, but I am going to do something healing and life-giving with mine. I'm very grateful to know people like that, and I hope that I've shown a bit of that here tonight as well. This next piece that I want to share with you isn't actually a song, it's a poem. I wrote it as part of another project that I was working on, which has been sitting on the shelf for a while now, because I haven't had much inspiration for it, but I do love this piece, and so I thought I would share it with you tonight. It's called Love and Fear. You call this love, but it causes such division. You call this love, and yet it is not kind. You call this love, but insist on your own way. You call this love, yet you rejoice in what is hurtful. This, this is not love. This is not of God. This is fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the different. Fear of the strange, the queer. Where there is fear, there is not love. Your fear and the fear of those around you and before you and above you, your fear has caused so much pain, so much hurt, so much trauma, so much death. Because you can't believe in a God that big. And that gracious. And that loving. And so the world has been taught to move to the tune of your fear. But we are singing a different tune now. We are singing a different song. A song of transformation. Of joy. Of freedom. Of life. Of diversity. Of love. A greater love than you seem to be able to imagine. And we are bringing people hope and new life. You know, like you were supposed to be doing, like Jesus did. That's us now. And now, you fear for your faith. You fear for your church. Let me tell you something. Faith is flourishing. And the church is looking better than it ever did, but it's a bit different to how it used to look. And we're not giving you back the reins. You've had your time. Now you're done. I have so many more songs and stories that I could share, but I only have so much time. Hopefully some of the ones that I've shared tonight have resonated with you. 
maybe helped you feel like you're not alone, or maybe inspired you to change something in your life. Before I finish up, a couple of thanks. Firstly, to Maddie, who gave me this spot as part of Limitless here at 107 Projects. She has been amazing, and I'm really thankful for this opportunity. Um, Limitless is the Deaf and Disability Hub, which is here at 107 Projects, and there's some other great um, shows that are a part of it as well, and I encourage you to check them out. Um, one of them, before breakfast, lent me this piano that I'm able to use, so I'm very thankful to them as well. Um, also to the great staff here at 107 Projects who accommodated us so well. I really appreciate all that you've done and the space that you've made here. A big thanks also to my tech person, Jack, up the back, you've been amazing. And a particular thanks to everyone at Sydney Fringe for helping me get all of this work in and enabling me to bring this to life. Lastly, a massive thanks to each but one of you for being here and being a wonderful audience. I do really appreciate it. I have one last song that I want to share with you. A little peek behind the curtain, the songs that I shared with you tonight were mostly written last year or earlier this year. I had already bundled most of them together as sort of an album, and they were the sorts of stories that I really wanted to share, so that's what I've done. But it was missing something. This next song was written just a month ago, and it hits a bit of a different note to the other songs that I've shared so far. I've spoken a lot about the boxes and lines that the conservative church sets up and why they're not great, um, but I wanted a song that talked about what the whole experience was like for me. The roller coaster of figuring things out, the many years of just having no clue and grieving for that loss of time, and the joy of where I am now. It's this very bittersweet feeling of all that I've had to go through, but being grateful for where I am now. And it all collides in what I call a beautiful disaster. And in the middle of that mess is where I find God. Honestly, there's still so much I'm still figuring out and reconstructing in how I relate to God and what I believe about who they are and what I don't believe and all of this sort of stuff. But I know that they are with me in my pain and grieving with me and helping me to come out the other side, whatever that has looked like and whatever that will look like. And there are times, many, many times, when I don't really know what they're doing or where life is going. But I know that they are here. And that thanks to them, I'm here too. It's been kind of crazy and weird along the way, but in many, many senses it still is, but I am grateful to be here. It's also acknowledging that they're many people that have been on this journey of deconstruction and religious trauma and many just do not have the energy to deal with it anymore. You know, they've moved away from the label of Christian, they've moved away from churches and they're doing their own thing. And that's okay. You know, if you want to meet God in other ways and in other places, they're pretty good at doing that. If you're tired of God too, then fair enough. Live your life and find your joy where you can. But this song is a snapshot of the path that I've been down.